Thank you so much, Governor Hogan, for joining us today on this ASP Chat. It's great to see you again. It's good to see you too. It's great to be with you. So this month, Starting Point has teamed up with Newsweek for a special series on Gen Z and the future of American politics, exploring the issues most pressing to Gen Z at this time. Now, being that Gen Z is currently the most ethnically and racially diverse generation in America, today we wanted to focus on a significant and all too prevalent issue, the increase of racial violence against Asian Americans. There has been a 150% increase in the harassment and attacks against Asian Americans since the start of COVID last year. So Governor, can you talk a little bit about any correlation that you're seeing in regards to COVID and hate crimes? There's no question that we've seen a dramatic increase in, uh, in, in hate crimes and in, in general and violence in particular against the Asian uh, community uh, throughout the country. Uh, I think uh, hate crimes in general were down in cities across America last year. Uh, fairly substantially, but up on, almost 150 percent in the Asian American community. And, and uh, you know, as all of us were dealing with the problems of COVID, uh, folks in the Asian community were dealing with this additional crisis. Sometimes it was words that were insulting and attacking. Sometimes it was actual violence against them. And it's it's been happening in cities across America, but it's it's happening in, in, in small towns as well. And we're one of the most diverse states in America here in Maryland. And um, we've got a large Asian population along with a large African-American and Hispanic population. My wife happens to be the first Asian American first lady of, in, in Maryland history and the first uh, Korean American first lady of any state in America in history. And so, you know, my, my wife and, and three daughters and four grandkids you know, I, I, I understand it better than the average politician does because I've heard about, you know, the discrimination they've, they've contended with their whole lives and very specific issues and problems that close friends and family members have experienced over this past year. What classifies as a hate crime and, and what are the penalties for committing those types of crimes? Well, so the uh, d definition of a hate crime, certain things may not rise to a hate crime, but um, there's federal and state laws that are different, uh, you know, across across the country. But if you can see that the crime took place would be, be because of a particular, uh, you know, sometimes people happen to have a crime committed against them, you know, because they happen to be of a certain race or ethnic background, but it wasn't the reason for it. Um, but if you can prove that uh, this was a hate crime against them, uh, because of their race or uh, ethnic uh, background or uh, country of origin, then, then, then uh, you know, prosecutors can go after hate crimes. We made it easier in our state of Maryland to uh, be able to classify hate crimes and to report hate crimes. We've, uh, we've increased the, the uh, number of patrols in our Asian communities, and we've brought together prosecutors, both federal and state prosecutors, to talk about, you know, what can we do? Uh, to make sure that uh, people that are guilty of these crimes are, are uh, prosecuted and to the full ex fullest extent of the law. How can we reduce the stigma around COVID in Asian Americans, other than the criminal penalties? And what other deterrents, social, professional, do you think that could be helpful in preventing future hate crimes? Well, I think part of it is awareness. Um, and we're all, you know, a lot of people are speaking out. Thank you uh, for addressing this issue and talking with folks about this. You, you notice uh, because it's gotten so bad, we're hearing a lot more about it. Asians have been talking about this for a long time, but the the uh, the mainstream media it was not the lead story on the news. It wasn't on the front page of every paper until recently. And now people are some people are surprised. Like, what do you mean? I didn't I didn't realize there was this going on. Uh, but people in the Asian community have been dealing with it for a long time. My youngest daughter uh, was afraid to come visit us uh, with our grandchild because uh, her best friend's mom was attacked at a, a, a gas station. Um, you know, my, my other daughter's friend was getting on a plane with her kids. Uh, you know, this is a lawyer who went to law school with my daughter who, who was people were talking about going back to China uh, and yelling at her and making her feel uncomfortable. And, you know, my wife has got friends at her you know, Korean American church that have experienced problems while they're at the grocery store. And these are, you know, we, I, we, we just had a, a string of Asian businesses and Howard County, Maryland has about a 17% population, Asian population. Um, and then we've had a number on Lunar New Year, we had a number of Korean and uh, Chinese and Vietnamese businesses vandalized um, in, in what, you know, was obviously some kind of an attack on the Asian community.
Do you believe that state leaders or, or federal government should increase the penalties for hate crimes? And if so, how? In Maryland, we already have. And um, I, I know that there are a number of proposals in Congress. I spoke uh, with Congressman Jamie Raskin, who is put, putting together a, uh, a committee. He's the, uh, the chairman of the committee that's studying these. There's a couple of proposals in the House and the Senate. And I think one is raising awareness. Two is getting more support for the Asian community. Uh, three, you know, increasing patrols and prosecutions of existing laws. And then uh, perhaps perhaps there's a, a need to uh, strengthen laws at, uh, at either the federal level, at some state levels where they don't have the same uh, protections that we do here in our state. As we all know, racism is in general a major problem in our culture today. As you mentioned, you have an extraordinarily diverse state. What solutions are you supporting to help achieve unity to prevent racism against all ethnic and cultural minorities in our communities? Well, this is um, it's a problem that has been around for a long time. Uh, discrimination of, of, of many types against many different groups of people. Um, I think there's more of a discussion about that and has been over the past year. Um, I think hopefully we can all work uh, to, to, to make our state and our nation a better place where we can somehow get to the point where we're not discriminating against anybody for any reason. Um, but it's, it's, it's a problem that there's lots of discussions going on at the federal, state, and local levels. You know, I mentioned we, our, our state has the highest black population of any state outside the South. I, I think we are the, the most diverse or one of the most diverse states. So we're a real melting pot of people from many different cultures and races and, and ethnic origins. And, and we, I think for the most part, um, haven't had problems as bad as other states, but there's no question racism you know exists everywhere and it's something we've all got to figure out you know what, what we can do about it can i just ask you real quick you would i think two weeks ago you uh passed some legislation regarding hbcus we did so uh, we you know we um we have a number of really terrific hbcus in the state of maryland we've put record funding into them seven budgets in a row and and uh, really tried to uh, catch up on uh, they were you know, falling behind some of the other schools and weren't for many years. They were not being funded at a high enough level. We actually, for seven years in a row, funded them at a higher level than any other colleges just uh, to help make up for some, uh, you know, some past uh, failures. Uh, and we just signed into law a, a piece of legislation that requires an additional uh, $456 million more to be put into our HBCUs, which is going to go a long way. Uh, to uh, bring in about parity and, and making sure that these schools are providing a, a wide range of programs and, and providing an education to uh, anybody in our state who wants one. Last question, Governor. As the Asian American community struggles with this horrific and undeserved violence, how can all of us, the government and average Americans, best work to support them? I think words of support are critically important. So we've been out in the, in the Asian American community Repeatedly, I, I mentioned my, you know, my wife, uh, who, who's, you know, was born in South, South Korea, but grew up here and raised our daughters here. Um, it, it, she's been very active, but I, I think that people showing support, like for example, we went out to there's a number of, we have hundreds of Asian businesses, and if people can go out and show their support for these businesses that have been struggling, if they can reach out to their neighbors, um, let them know that we do care about them, that uh, that, that the rest of the community is going to support them, and and uh, recognize the problem because one of the things I keep hearing over and over again from our Asian community is people didn't realize we, we have people over and over again saying, what do you mean? There, there's no racism against Asians and it's a terrible problem. Uh, so I think let, letting people know that we're going to be there to support them. Um, and, and I think going out and supporting your, your friends and neighbors and your communities and local businesses and, and, and helping them overcome these challenges that we're going through and let people know that, um, you know, every one of us, uh, regardless of, uh, of what our race is or where we come from you know this is america is a great country and uh, they, they people came here for the american dream many of our asian mem members are have spent their whole lives here in 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 this in this country and, and yet they're treated as if they're they're uh, something other and not part of us and it's just wrong so we, we have to let people know how much how much we care and, and how important they are to uh, the fabric of our society absolutely Governor, as always, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We appreciate always talking to you, especially on these ASP chats. Yeah, well, thank you guys very much. It's great to see you both.